My brand is strong in that people send me weird stuff and it's my fault. A little while ago during a Because Science Live, we were asking how much force would it take to uh, rip someone's head off like Sub-Zero? I said it would probably take a lot of force and you know, we've never done any experiments like that so how will we know? Except we kinda have. So one of you sent me a very interesting study that took some case reports from all the way back in the 1800s of when prisoners and convicts were hanged in England and they actually did some mathematical calculations to see how many foot pounds of force applied to the neck would remove someone's head from their body. So if you have someone who's around 160 pounds falling about 14 and a half feet, at the end of that, the rope will pull on this uh, poor person's head with about 2,300 foot pounds of energy. That's probably more than you can pull on with your hand, but that, that, pulls, that pulled a couple heads off back in the day. Whew, it's a bad and a brutal way to go. But at least now I know more than I wanted to about it, and so do you. Hello and welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science where I take all your comments, questions, and corrections about a two-eyed, one-gloved, giant, purple, people duster and address, I did it, and address them huh, with the gusto of an expanding Ant-Man. You could say I expand upon your, and then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, it's about Game of Thrones cause that's coming out. Hey, have you heard about that Game of Thrones? Yeah, come over to my house and we'll have a watching party. I'll serve guacamole and we can say winter is coming back and forth to each other and act like we're friends, but really we're acquaintances and I haven't seen you since the last time Game of Thrones was on. Are we actually friends? I don't know, you know where I live now. But getting right into it, in the last episode of Because Science, we did it. Whatever it takes. We were trying to figure out if Ant-Man could expand inside of Thanos' butt and destroy him from the inside out like the meme of yore going around the internet for the last couple of months said. I said that Thanos' colon is probably strong enough to resist the expanding power of an Ant-Man, soon to be giant man, and therefore he would just get stuck inside of Thanos' colon like getting stuck inside the Soul Stone, and that would be bad. But what did you have to say? Wow, there are over 2,500 comments at the time I'm filming this video, just a few hours after it published, so wow, get in there and get nerdy, but first, butt puns. Jeff McNally says, well, Scott Lang has always been more of a thief, not an ass ass -in. <laughs> Sin Carnage says, this was astounding. There was a lot of heart and passion. <laughs> in this video. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sunyata says, wow, that was astonishing. It was really cracking me up, so I'm glad Kyle got to the bottom of this. This is a video which you can really get behind, but no, seriously, I bet Kyle was just pushing our buttons in this video. I think that I have pooped out all of my butt puns now. I am asking you, Kyle, please put this in footnotes. You are the greatest. With you around, we can all beat Thanos. Don't try to just pucker up and kiss my butt on that one. I'm not just, just, just gonna feature a comment. That would be rebutculous. <laughs> Moving on from the butt puns, because like this meme, they have to die. Nerade Abel says, well, if he brought something sharp and pointy, Ant-Man, that should work. Uh, Omegal, Adrian Ortiz, all say some, uh, something to a similar effect, as do many of you who say, if pressure is the problem here, why doesn't Ant-Man just bring something really sharp? Like, uh, I don't know, a vibranium blade. Or maybe he just expands like this. Well, you're right, if pressure is a problem, if Scott Lang could hold onto a sword as he expanded, remember, there'd be a lot of force on his body parts as he's expanding because pressure is being put on them, so it'd be hard to hold a sword against something you're expanding through, but if it was sufficiently sharp, then Ant-Man with a sword could do a lot of damage to a colon despite its strength because at the very tip of a sword, you have a very, very, very thin edge, which with some amount of force increases the pressure substantially. Substantially. Karsten69 nice says, hey Kyle, I know it didn't end up mattering, but it bears a mention. Uh, Newton's third law would mean that if Ant-Man could rupture uh, Thanos' intestines, uh, he would also feel the same force, meaning that if Thanos exploded, Ant-Man would implode from the surrounding pressure. Well, I get your point. So if Ant-Man was expanding with enough pressure to completely rupture Thanos from the inside out, then the same amount of force would be pressing on 
his body, right? And the human body, uh, let's say that the suit isn't providing much additional protection from pressure, like, you know, a pressurized diving suit or something like that. The human body can withstand quite a bit of pressure, uh, a few atmospheres, up to a few dozen atmospheres if you're uh, a free diver going very deep, you know, 300 feet or 100 meters below the surface of the ocean. The human body can withstand a lot of pressure, but not an infinite amount of pressure, or maybe not enough pressure to <laughs> rupture a super strong Hulk beating down Mad Titan. So there would be some problem with Scott Lang's body if he tried to do this for real. I mean, when you're under pressure, just think of how uncomfortable it is just sitting next to someone on an airplane who has their arm touching yours on the armrest. Do not touch me. My point is, is that it wouldn't take all that much pressure to start really confining and damaging Ant-Man's body. Is that enough pressure to destroy Thanos? I don't know, but you're right, it would be a problem. Walter did own zero zero, and many of you also point out that this may be, this meme, might not be the best way to defeat Thanos in this way in the first place. Why does an Ant-Man just fly into I don't know, his vocal tract and just expand and suffocate him or just fly into one of his veins or arteries or what have you, expand enough, you don't have to rupture it and just block blood flow to Thanos' brain until he passes out. Wouldn't that work? Yes, you're right. There would be a lot of other ways that Ant-Man could use this method to defeat Thanos. Think about Ant-Man shrinking down and going into Thanos' brain tissue. You know, there's a lot of smart people on the Avengers. Maybe he goes to the parts of the brain that are responsible for moral decisions decision making and he starts punching them. <laughs> and then suddenly Thanos starts making different decisions. You know what? Maybe my population theory isn't correct and I'm gonna, just gonna be a nice grimace from now on, not a big angry grimace. Or you could just kick his spinal cord real hard. That would probably do the trick. Pass out and die instantaneously, lose all control. You know, actually if Ant-Man kicked or otherwise destroyed Thanos' spinal cord, it would cut off the signaling from presumably Thanos' brain to his arms and hands and therefore gauntlet, which would render him unable to use the gauntlet and he would cease to be such a threat. I mean, it's almost like memes aren't the best possible option for a fictional thing to happen. Like I said, there are many, many comments at the time I'm filming this video, so I had to pick a good one, and that comes from Danny Trent, who says, Hey Kyle, good show. Oh. Oh. Who says, I used to work in a hospital lab, and I got to handle colon with his own hands. It's heavy and seems pretty robust, certainly tougher than skin. It's basically a thick piece of muscly flesh. Based on my experiences, I have some doubt in your numbers, meaning that I considered it to be not as strong as Danny does. When you consider there is force applied by the muscles as well as the tensile strength against Ant-Man, it just gets harder for him. Keep it up. Hey, look, I'm just a nerd with a meme in my hands. Danny actually had colon on his hands. And for that, Danny, and pointing out that it is stronger than you think, and if all of our assumptions and estimations are correct, then maybe Ant-Man really cannot get out of something like a normal human colon. For all of that, Danny, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> hey, but of course, I'm not always right. I think the last time someone said happy birthday to me in public like a stranger, I said, you too! So what did I get wrong about Thanos' butt? We are gonna do something a little bit different for this week's corrections because there seems to be only one big one, and one of you uh, puts it the best way in my estimation. But Maddie0311, Heromir Stifter, Batsu84, Steve Shannon, Mario, uh, they all say something like, well, the pressure value is the most important thing here. If we're estimating a pressure value for Ant-Man, that will be what we compare with the tensile strength of Thanos colon, so that is what we really wanna get right. What everyone is saying is that I use the wrong pressure value, because if we use this scene where the Wasp's car is enlarging and launching this Yukon XL into the air, I use the pressure when her car is at its largest. What everyone is saying is, wouldn't the pressure be much, much higher when the car is at its smallest and starts pushing on the Yukon. And Anders Killmark, I think, puts it the best. He goes through a lot of math that I agree with and comes up with a force value similar to what I came up with. However, because the car starts out a lot smaller, he uses a much smaller surface area to distribute all of that force across. And if you do that, you do not get 
2.5 PSI. As Anders points out, you get 250 PSI. And if that pressure keeps increasing when Ant-Man gets smaller and smaller, if you put Ant-Man in something like Thanos' colon with the radius that we estimated, then he could put some kind of stress in it in the ballpark, Anders says, of 10 gigapascals, which is 10,000 times more than 0.9 megapascals uh, that we said is the ultimate tensile strength of colon. That would make our conclusion kind of wrong. So let me address all of this right now. I think you are correct. You are all correct in assuming that if we have a constant force value for the expansion of pin particles, then depending on the surface area of the thing, it's going to be a lot more pressure when the thing is very small, like the tiny car, versus uh, when it's much bigger, like when Giant Man appears out of the bay. However, Ant-Man is weird. And the physics of Ant-Man is weird. And like how Ant-Man can't really be Ant-Man mass when he is small, because if he was standing on the end of a gun, for example, if he's 175 pounds, he would just push it right down. For the same reason why mass changes when Ant-Man's size changes, I think the pressure has to change as well. So let me explain. I, I think that the pressure, the pushing pressure stays constant, but the force does not. Because if the pressure didn't stay constant, then when Ant-Man and the Wasp are expanding on the surface of a ground or even the surface of a person, the pressure, when they expanded nearly instantly instantaneously would be so much on their feet, on their hands, when they're punching someone, for example, their feet would probably go right into the ground and definitely right through a person. If you just had the surface area of a fist and you go in Ant-Man and the Wasp and you look at a scene where the Wasp punches a guy as she's expanding, the pressure on the end of her fist would be something like a water cutter. And obviously, her fist does not go straight into this guy, then expand and explode his chest from the inside out. That just doesn't happen. It appears to have all of the makings of a normal kind of interaction. So the pressure is not that high. So my contention is that when the Wasp's car is that small, it is not pressing with tens of thousands of PSI on the ground and the car. It could shoot into the car or into the ground if some of that was the case. So I was assuming a constant pressure value acting across the surface area of the van in question. And just to be safe, adding to that, I went back to the scene frame by frame, and when it looks like the car starts pressing on the Yukon that gets flipped, it looks like her car is only maybe one-tenth the surface area I assumed from full size down to when it actually starts pressing up on the car. And if you use that value, it does change our numbers, but it gives a tensile stress inside of Thanos' colon, as we assumed it, of about one megapascal. Now, that is great greater than the ultimate tensile strength of human colon at 0.9 megapascals, but it is right there on the edge, and Thanos is very, very, very strong, can take punches from the Hulk, for example. So if his colon is even a little bit stronger than human colon, even if we start when the car is very small, we still have a pressure value that says Ant-Man probably cannot explode Thanos. But Anders and all of you, I think you're exactly correct. If real world physics and Ant-Man physics always worked perfectly together, then there would be substantial pressure at the smallest sizes of Ant-Man, I just do not think that's the case from what we see. For pointing all of that out and doing all of your own math, Anders, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> Man. Now that that meme is hopefully dead forever, what's coming up next week on Because Science? Oh, let me tell you. How do White Walkers shatter steel swords? That's right, for this week's episode of Because Science, we're heading back to Westeros to figure out how magically cold ice zombies could, in theory, shatter a steel sword. And this is actually a collaboration video with me and my friend Alan Pan from Sufficiently Advanced and the Science of Mortal Kombat. What is the relationship between White Walker thermodynamics and steel metallurgy? Huh, you're gonna have to find out. So, go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, leave me all of your nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. This one. 
And don't forget, I've pretty much run out of anything inspirational or interesting to say at the end of these videos. So instead, what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of something I'm enjoying from outside of the world in science and pop culture at the end of these videos now. How about that? You know what? Hey, you like jazz? <laughs> Someone that I recently found out about who is a legendary jazz pianist that I never knew existed. His name is Bill Evans. He is absolutely fantastic. He has many, many albums up on YouTube. Now, unfortunately, passed away, but he is a magician on the keys, and you're going to want to check him out if you like jazz at all. It's awesome music to uh, work to.